Hello, this is Eric White. This is the fourth screencast in a series of screencasts on getting started with OpenXML. In this screencast, I'm going to focus on the scenarios around spreadsheet ML and presentation ML. In the last screencast, I focused on the scenarios around word processing ML, and we saw that the three main scenarios are document generation, extracting data and content from an OpenXML document, and transformations of word processing documents to another form, such as HTML or XML. The two scenarios around spreadsheet ML are parallel to the first two scenarios around word processing ML. The most common use of spreadsheet ML is to generate a spreadsheet, and the second most common use of spreadsheet ML is to extract data from a spreadsheet, thereby using that spreadsheet as a source of data for some other process. So let's talk first about spreadsheet generation. The most common use is for a user to download data from an enterprise resource planning system or an accounting system. Often, accountants or information workers need to do specialized analysis or specialized processing of data. The appropriate way to accomplish these tasks is to download the data and then manipulate that data in a tool that they are very familiar with, such as Excel. Another example of downloading data is downloading custom content from websites. My bank has a feature whereby I can download all of the transactions for a certain period of time as an Excel spreadsheet. This could be handily accomplished by generation of an OpenXML spreadsheet server-side and then enabling the end user to download that spreadsheet. Recently, I wrote an article and recorded a screencast around building an ASP.NET web application with OpenXML functionality. This is prototype code that you could use in combination with other spreadsheet generation code to build a website that enables the end user to download the custom spreadsheet after you have generated it. Another place where we see the ability to download spreadsheets is the ability to download data from SharePoint. You can export any list in SharePoint as a spreadsheet. This is a very handy and useful way to download that data and then further manipulate that data. However, sometimes the out-of-the-box feature to download spreadsheets doesn't have the right functionality. Recently, as part of a project, I wrote code that implemented a specialized download that could download data from multiple SharePoint lists into a single spreadsheet. Here, Brian Jones and Zaid Rajabi detail a solution to export data from the AdventureWorks database into an OpenXML spreadsheet. There's another scenario where using the OpenXML SDK really provides the best option available, and that is when you need to generate a spreadsheet that has perhaps a million rows. Recently, I dealt with an insurance company, and they had the need to export data that had hundreds of thousands of rows into an Excel spreadsheet. This would enable their end users to open up the spreadsheet, go modify data as appropriate, save the spreadsheet, and then they could import that spreadsheet back into their database. Here, Brian Jones and Zayed Rajabi detail a streaming solution for writing extremely large Excel files with the OpenXML SDK. When writing very large Excel files, the problem is not so much one of how much CPU time you use or how fast your disk I.O. is. Instead, the problem is really one of how much memory you use. What is the size of your working set? If you were to use a traditional document object model approach where the entire workbook and worksheet is kept in memory, 
you would run out of memory in a .NET application after only a few hundred thousand rows. Using this streaming approach, you can create spreadsheets with literally millions of rows. Recently, I wrote a blog post and recorded a screencast that shows how to use Link to XML to generate huge spreadsheets. I've published that blog post and screencast on openxmldeveloper.org. The other important scenario around spreadsheet ML is that of data extraction. In other words, using the spreadsheet as a data source. I've heard it said that Excel is arguably the most used database in the entire world. Many of us have had the experience of using a spreadsheet as a database of sorts, treating the rows in a workbook as records in a database. And of course, after putting all that data into a workbook and worksheet, you want to get at that data. Some time ago, I wrote a little bit of code that enables you to use language integrated query to query Excel tables. You can retrieve all of the data in a table given its table name, and you can write code such that you're referring to the columns in the table by their column names. Here's an example of the use of that code. After opening the spreadsheet, you use this table method passing the name of the table. You can then call the table rows method, which returns an I enumerable of a type called row. You can then use the default indexer of that row class, passing in the column name into that default indexer, and thereby retrieving the value of that cell. I recently had a real-world need to do this. I had maintained a list of all of the OpenXML content that I had found across the web, and I'd maintained this information in a spreadsheet. I wanted to generate some HTML such that it would make it very easy for people to navigate through all of that content. I wrote a transform that took as a data source, an OpenXML spreadsheet, and then generated all of that HTML. This screencast here details that particular use of spreadsheet ML. You can see the results of that transform by coming to the homepage of openxmldeveloper.org, coming down to the bottom of the homepage, clicking on OpenXML Developer Wiki, in there, you can click on this link, OpenXML Content by Keyword. Here you can see the content for topics all across the web organized by keyword. So if we, for instance, want to find all of the content that is around spreadsheet ML, we can click on this link and find a very large amount of content. All of the markup that you're looking at here is generated by the example that I present in that screencast on openxmldeveloper.org. Here's another example that shows how to use language integrated query to query tables in Excel. This example is coded in the strongly typed object model of the OpenXML SDK v2. This topic is a visual how-to that includes a video. On Brian Jones and Zayed Rajabi's blog, Zayed presents an example here that shows how to read data from a spreadsheet. Key point about this is that it's easy enough to read data out of spreadsheet ML. It's not very complicated. The last scenario that I'm going to talk about in this screencast is that of generation of presentations using presentation ML. Some time ago, I wrote a blog post and recorded a screencast around the topic of using a template presentation to generate multiple presentations. One of the problems around using a presentation as a template is that presentations do not have a feature such as content controls that enable you to delineate content. However, there's a very easy way to work around this. The way that I detailed in this presentation is to use a less than hash 
and a hash greater than to delineate the metadata that is stored in the presentation. There are some very specific techniques that make it easy to process the text in a presentation looking for the less than hash and hash greater than. If you are in the market for a solution that uses a template presentation to generate multiple presentations, I recommend that you read this blog post and watch the accompanying video. There is a Microsoft case study on a market research firm that used OpenXML to generate presentations. This is a firm that needs to generate multiple presentations for their customers at the end of certain periods. Before using OpenXML, they had an office automation solution, and it finally had reached the point where it had become really unworkable. Using OpenXML, this firm was able to put together a much more viable solution. In the last screencast, I presented the three main scenarios around word processing ML, and in this one, I presented the two main scenarios around spreadsheet ML and the one main scenario around presentation ML. In the next screencast in this series, I'm going to talk about programming techniques that you can use to implement these various types of scenarios.